Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you're tired of buffering, slow Wi-Fi, and feeling like your home network is stuck in the Stone Age, then you're in the right place. Today, we're diving deep into what GLINet is calling the mother of all home routers, the brand new GLINet Flint 3. The beast of a router has been buzzing in the tech community, and for good reason. As you can see, I've had my experience with a lot of GLINet tech routers, mostly in the travel router category. But today, we're changing that. Yes, I've got my hands on the Flint 3 BE9300 tri-band Wi-Fi 7 router. And I'd just like to give a big thanks to GLINet for sending this to me completely free of charge for review. This is a beast. This is one hell of a box. It's quite heavy very large and nothing I've experienced from GLINet before because I haven't even gone through the Flint 1 or Flint 2 which some of you folks probably have. It has a lot of the familiar features such as OpenWRT, multiple VPN client server options, it has the famous multi-link operation, built-in AdGuard home parental controls and such. But this router is sporting a few extra specs not found on the other routers. It's hosting tri-band Wi-Fi 7 with the 6 GHz band, multi-WAN, 5 2.5 gigabit ports, OpenWRT, VPN client servers, multi-link operation, AdGuard parental support. It's running a Qualcomm quad-core CPU with 1.5 GHz per core. It's got 1 GB of DDR4 RAM. 8 gigabytes of built-in eMMC memory. It uses the 802.11a, B, G, N, A, C, A, X, and B, E protocols. It's boasting Wi-Fi speeds of up to 688 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band, 2,882 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band, and 5,765 megabits per second on the 6 gigahertz band. As mentioned, the Ethernet speeds can range from 10, 100, 1000 to 2500 megabits per second, depending on which wire you're using. It has four foldable antennae, external Wi-Fi antennae, it has dual color LED indicators. It takes power input of 12 volts, 4 amps. Now, power consumption without USB loads are less than 25 watts. With USB loads, that can go all the way up to 37.2 watts and 848 grams. It, it is pretty heavy. Um, but that obviously I'm, I'm going off on the box at the moment. Okay, let's unbox this baby My favorite tab pull at the top here Love it I always love these box presentations and there's the inside of our box Okay, so we've got the power adapter our documentation that we're not going to use because what's the point of watching these videos otherwise? multi-country plug sockets based on that I'm thinking that's a European edition which is good because I'm in the United Kingdom. Well, that's a beefy Ethernet cable. What have we got in this? We've got Cat6, and then we've got the router itself. And there she is in all her glory. The Flint 3. Lots of ventilation. Absolute ridiculous amount of ventilation on there. USB 3.0 ports. There's our 5 gigabit Ethernet, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. Reset button, power, WAN, although apparently you can turn the first Ethernet port there into LAN WAN. BE9300 Wi-Fi 7 router. Always the default 192.168.81. IP address to start with. Yeah, look at that. I was expecting kind of like a, a Flint 3 logo across the top here. I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity in branding. Like all GLINet routers, it comes with the GLINet firmware flavor of OpenWRT and the management interface if you've used these routers in the past is very familiar and very easy to get along with even if you are a newcomer. One of the features I enjoy most on these routers is the ability to be anywhere in the world and also appear as though I'm right back there at home. Perfect if I'm traveling but need to use my home IP address for work or other reasons. While connected to your router, just go to the IP address 192.168.8.1 or whatever you've set it to, and then down to Applications. You'll be able to see Dynamic DNS, which you can click. Click Enable. 
tick the box for the agree terms conditions and then click apply. Then just go up to VPN, WireGuard server, click start. Once that's successfully started, you can just create yourself a profile and you'll need to do this for each device that you're going to use, like a laptop or a mobile phone. We're going to put in here S23 Ultra for myself and then click apply. Make sure we've got the use DDNS domain option selected. Next, just scan that with the WireGuard app, which we've downloaded on our phone. And then make sure we've checked the box after naming it to say that we want to use it. And voila, no matter where you are in the world, your IP address is now showing as your home. Just one tip. If you go to the VPN dashboard, scroll down to the little cog next to WireGuard, Make sure you've got remote access LAN turned on if you intend to use anything on your home network, such as remote connecting into other computers, accessing printers, or network storage devices, things like that. I've also done some uh, Flint 3 WireGuard speed tests as well, um, and I run the Flint 3 to the Slate 7 and also the Spitz Plus, and then did them in reverse as well. And I found that the WireGuard speeds were hitting their, their absolute maximum throughputs. For example, the Spitz Plus can only reach up to about 190 megabits per second on WireGuard, and the Slate 7 can go up to about 490 megabits per second, and these results definitely show that. So the Flint 3 is definitely powering good results in terms of VPN access. I also ran a few iPerf3 tests across the network there to the Flynn 3 just to see if I could hit that 2.5 gigabits per second. And I was getting pretty close. I was getting just over the 2 gigabits um, per second there. Um, so yeah, you know, in terms of testing across the network, I don't have much traffic and it was, it was going pretty well. Now I tested my Wi-Fi over my Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. The six gigahertz was getting me about 1.3 gigabits per second. The five gigahertz just over a gigabit per second and the 2.4 gigahertz per second just uh, over about 100 megabits per second, which was wild. Um, but my networking environment may be different to yours. But the real magic of the Flint 3 is its insane low latency. The connection is instantaneous. My ability to land a kickflip in this game, not so much. Seriously, this thing is a beast for gaming and it's an absolute game changer for cloud services like Xbox Game Pass. And I had no low latency problems at all running this game. Another awesome feature of GLI Net Routers is Good Cloud, the basically remote access software to access all your devices, which are really cool as well. I still prefer WireGuard, but you can do some really cool things with this, such as um, a remote SSH, remote GUI, uh, which you just need to make sure you've turned on in the router settings. Another cool uh, offering from GLINet is Astro Warp, which you can enable on this router and many others, which basically allows you to create your own version of Tailscale or Zero Tier, for example. You can create a site-to-site -site VPN system that you can have exclusively running through certain encrypted servers or other P2P enabled options. And it gives you your own kind of virtual network uh, that you can uh, manage and uh, work out what devices you want to give certain permissions to and certain resources to. Great if you're sharing things like this with friends that maybe want to connect over maybe like a LAN party, but a, a remotely uh, off-site. I'm going to be doing a, a video on Astro Warp in the near future. And that brings us to the end of our review of the Flint 3. I think it's a great setup, it's great improvements, uh, and obviously adds Wi-Fi 7. So I will catch you in the next one.